Rebecca Gompertz is the founder and director of Women on Waves and Women on Web. Women on Waves is a non-profit pro-choice women's rights organization that aims to provide reproductive health services and counseling to women in countries with re restrictive abortion laws. With a ship, it can perform abortions on international waters where the Dutch laws on the ship's flag apply. Uh, its sister organization, Women on Web, is an online abortion service and refers women in countries where safe abortion services are not available. My background is a medical doctor and not a political activist. But the human body is a very powerful political tool. Its reproduction can be controlled and changed. Laws and regulations are put in place to increase or diminish population. And so who controls reproduction is what matters most when considering right to self-determination. Without an active intervention, the reproduction happens at a high rate. Uh, this is why people have always had uh, forms of birth control since ancient times. And, uh, but only since the last century, there have been kind of active um, contraceptive methods been available with the contraceptive pill uh, since the 1960s. And this changed the reality for women around the world. Um, however, even uh, the most effective contraceptive methods fail. And uh, research has shown that when a woman uses contraceptives for 10 years, uh, the concept, for example, the contraceptive pill, they still about 60% will get pregnant anyway. So this brings us to abortion. As some claim it should be kind of the um, rare, this is not a reality. Abortion is the most performed medical intervention in the world. There's 42 million abortions taking place every year. About a quarter of all pregnancies are unplanned. Um, Half of these abortions are taking place in countries where it's illegal. So 21 million of the abortions are unsafe. Access to abortion can be restricted in different ways. And there's three ways that I want to address here, financially, logistically, and legally. Um, and that makes abortion actually an issue of social justice. Because when women have money and um, information. Wherever they live, they will be able to travel to another country or to find a doctor that change, charges a lot of money to do a proper abortion procedure. It's the women that are poor and the women that don't have access to information that suffer from obstructions to abor access to abortion. And this is not just in the countries where abortion is legal, but also in the countries where uh, illegal, also in the countries where abortion is illegal. Uh, for example, in the United States or in Canada, a safe abortion is costing around $650. That's where it starts. This is the, the, the minimum wage for a lot of women, and they don't have the money to pay for this. Um, but increasingly, um, regulations in, in the United States are trying to restrict access to abortion. And this means that sometimes women have to travel for more than 200 miles in order to access a safe abortion service, even though it is legal. And this makes it impossible for women to access. Um, if we look around at the abortion laws around the world, the, most, the, uh, the countries where abortion is illegal, it's a north-south differentiation. So in the north, Europe, Russia, China, um, United States abortion has been legalized uh, since the 1920s. Um, actually, Russia was the first country to legalize abortion because it believed that men and women were equal and that men and women had equal rights in the 1920s. Um, after that, the United States uh, legalized abortion in 1973. Uni United Kingdom legalized abortion in 1969. And a country like the Netherlands, for example, only legalized abortion in 1984. Here in Belgium, the king had to step down for one day because he refused 
to sign the abortion law when it was legalized in, the 19, in 1990. Um, but abortion is still illegal in whole of South America, uh, with the exception of Uruguay, um, in most countries of Africa, with the exception of South Africa, and almost all of Asia. The recent developments around the world, for example, we've seen Turkey, where abortion is legal till 10 weeks, but Erdogan, uh, who wants a multiple child policy, is uh, restricting access to abortion um, and has been closing down uh, clinics. In Spain, recently, where abortion was legalized a few years ago, they tried to restrict the uh, abortion law again. So now I'm going to come to a little bit the technical part. <coughs> There's two ways to do an abortion. One is surgery, where the doctor or somebody who's very skilled, who knows where is the uterus or the womb, and understands what uh, he or she is doing uh, is needed. Another method of abortion, which was in, discovered in the 1990s, uh, is medical abortion, abortion with pills. Um, and this has, like the contraceptive pill, re revolutionized the situation for women, where women needed to have a doctor before they don't need a doctor anymore, because to take a pill you don't need a doctor, you just need access to the medicines. A medical abortion has been proven to be extremely safe. It's safer than using Viagra. More men are dying from Viagra than women having a safe abortion with medicines. The risk is one in half a million. It's safer than giving birth. So the alternative of a safe abortion, uh, one in 10,000 women dies from giving birth. And the risk of having a, to die from a medical abortion is again less than one in half a million. It's very safe. It's like a miscarriage. So while women are still dying in large numbers in countries where abortion is illegal. One in 450 women that tries to do an abortion using dangerous methods, which means jumping off stairs, using knitting needles to put in their womb, herbs, poisons. One in 450 women die. And this is just because medical abortion is not available. In the countries where medical abortion is available, um, the death rate uh, drops drastically. So we say that um, medical abortion is, is, is a revolution um, for women. And that is where Women on Waves work begins. Um, it has already been explained. We are an organization that works to guarantee access to safe abortion and also to the information. And we have a couple of strategies that we use. We started with a ship, a Dutch ship, that sails to a country where abortion is illegal. If it takes women on board in the harbor, sails to international waters, 12 miles of shore, the penal codes don't apply anymore, and it's Dutch law that applies. So uh, a woman can take the pills, she swallows them, we sail back the same day or a few hours later, and when she's back in the harbor, she has a miscarriage. Um, we have done several campaigns. We went to Ireland, to Portugal, to Poland, um, and most recently to Morocco, and we've also been in Spain. Every time that the ship has been sailing, the governments tried to stop the ship uh, from uh, sailing in or sailing out or doing whatever we want to do. And I think this is because it's a, normally abortion is a very hidden problem. It's women that suffer in silence. Um, and the ship is unapologetic. It's very visual. It's showing the problem. And people get quite upset about it. And I think exemplary is during our campaign in Portugal, uh, when the ship was on its way to Portugal, the Minister of Defense decided that we were a threat to national security and sent two warships to stop the ship from sailing in. Um, that time, we couldn't do any abortions. But um, it, had, it, it led to the legalization of abortion in Portugal. Since our campaigns with the ship, we started getting a lot of emails from women, women asking for help when the ship would be there. And that is why we started Women on Web. And Women on Web is an online consultation. Women just fill in the online form on the internet, a doctor looks at it and um, writes the prescription and the medicines are sent to her home address. Now, there is no face-to-face -face consultation and um, the doctor is trusting women 
that they tell the truth about their health, about how long they are pregnant. Scientific research has shown that women know more or less how long they're pregnant, at least within the safety zone of a medical abortion, which can be done safely at home, according to the World Health Organization, till 12 weeks of pregnancy. Um, the medicines for medical abortion are on the list of essential medicines of the World Health Organization as well since 2005. Um, and the criticism that we get sometimes is, but you don't see the women, so how do you know that they're not lying? And my response is always that as a doctor, you always are relying on a trustful relationship with your patient. Uh, if I ask somebody who I want to give an injection of penicillin, if they're allergic or not, and this person says that I'm not, well, they know that they are. And then when I give the injection of penicillin and they get an allergic shock, I cannot be held responsible as a doctor because I need to rely on the information that the patient gives to me. And in that sense, we also trust women to give us truthful information about their health and the duration of their pregnancy. A lot of people also ask us, so what if a woman abuses it and she uses it anyway when she's pregnant for longer than 12 weeks, knowing that even though it might be dangerous? And I'm always surprised by that question because we trust people to deal with, um, um, with situations that are dangerous all the time. This is just a question that is being asked when it concerns women. We can ble buy bleach in a, f in, a, in a supermarket. Bleach is not intended to drink, and that is what you know. And so you don't ban the sales of bleach because some people might drink it and might endanger their health. I want to actually continue with some of the emails because I think the voices of the women are the most important. Okay, please help me. I'm from Poland and in my country abortion is illegal. I don't know what to do. I live in a small country. Please tell me how I can use any pill, get any pill. Who can help me? I'm alone. I'm 18 years old. It's fifth weeks. My family will throw me out of, from my, my home. They're very religious. Hello. I've stumbled upon your webpage while researching for ways to perform abortion. I live in a Catholic country where abortion is illegal. As far as I know, an illegal abortion costs 10,000 pesos more than two-thirds my monthly salary. I know it sounds harsh, but I'm afraid nevertheless. Going to another country to have one done is financially impossible for me. Would it really be necessary to have a DNC or that is only in a rare case that I'm bleeding? I'm sorry I sound paranoid, but I'm only 21 and I'm the sole breadwinner for my two-year-old son. I'm in the United States and I can't go to a doctor. I have no medical insurance, no income, and I'm a single mom. Every place I've called here is way more than I can afford. I can't find anyone who can help me. I just want to buy the pills online and use them at home. I'm from the Philippines. Much to my dismay, abortion is illegal here, though there are a lot of underground abortion procedures available. However, I'm afraid of their safety. I'm on my way to seven weeks pregnancy and I'm frustrated because I do not want to continue, but my right to choose abortion is not upheld here in this country. I'm outraged that I'm supposed to just accept what has been dictated by, my ultra, by the ultra-conservative religious groups here. My name is Sam and I'm 22. I'm 11 weeks pregnant and seeking an abortion. I don't know what to do as abortion is illegal in Northern Ireland and I cannot afford to travel to the UK as this currency is so expensive. I'm staying with, in the United States with an aunt and I found out I'm pregnant about two weeks late. I need your service because I can't go to a regular doctor unless emergency. I'm not a USA citizen and I'm very scared at what to do. My aunt told me about this service but I can't use it in, in the United States. Anyway, you can help. I have a relationship with a girl from Peru. I visited her for three weeks. In this time we've had sexual relation but not always safe. She didn't use the contraceptive pill and I didn't always use a condom. When I arrived, her menstruation had just finished. Now she had a blood test for pregnancy and it was positive. She still studies in the university and she wants to finish. And it's still one year. She's very scared. I'm an 18 year old American female and I live with my mother who's in the United States Army. We are stationed in South Korea in Camp Humphreys and I'm one week pregnant and I have not been to the doctor, and I don't want my mother to know, but I would like to get an abortion. I'm 21, I have a beautiful three-year-old daughter, 
for next month. I'm now in a situation pregnant. I have no insurance to cover an abortion in a clinic. I've applied for insurance through the government and that only put me in a never ending waiting list. And I've applied through two organizations that donate money to women with no money. So no luck so far, another dent end. I've been closing up myself with every herb in the book after reading up on herbal abortions. Hi, I'm Vanessa, and I live in a country where abortion is illegal. Today I took a pregnancy test and I found out I'm pregnant. I'm 23, jobless, and I just finished my undergraduate studies, and I really cannot afford a baby. I have studied really hard to be what I am today, and I'm not ready to be a mom. My sister is 19 years old. She phoned me asking if she could if I know any medication that she can use to terminate the pregnancy of two months. I'm a young 28 year living in the island of Malta. I'm five, five weeks pregnant and I want an abortion. But because I do not want the baby for a lot of reasons. In my country it's illegal and I need help badly. Please guide me in the right direction what to do. My daughter might be pregnant. She's 14 and recently told me her situation. Her and her boyfriend had sex as of one week ago from today. She's about one week late and I'm worried. I'm a 24 year old Cameroonian student in it Italy with a 23 week old pregnancy as a result of a rape case in Cameroon. I didn't realize I was pregnant until it was too late and due to the long delays and procedures in Italy when it comes to foreigners. I find myself in this terrible state. I don't speak Italian and that makes it even worse. I don't want to have this baby because I don't have the means to support the child and I don't want this child to continue reminding me of my horrifying experience. Please help me. And I can continue and continue because these are one of um, 8,000 emails per month we get. Uh, I found it very interesting how you um, addressed uh, the right to have an abortion as a universal uh, human rights issue, women's right and human rights issue. And you, um, use the international waters and uh, Dutch law under international waters uh, through these territory, extraterritorial waters, crossing state boundaries to provide women with this universal right. You're operating under the law of a country that has um, the abortion is legal. So in what ways do you sometimes face problematic situations in which uh, y you go to countries where it, it is not uh, the same legal status, and uh, do, is this sometimes perceived as, as in a problematic way, uh, some kind of women from Europe coming to perform these kinds of abortions? Like, I, I wonder if you have any confrontations like that. In the emails that uh, you read out, uh, which were very, uh, very uh, intense, they point towards the whole social and political situation around uh, the issue of abortion. It just shows that. Well, it's, it's not just a legal matter. It also tells us a lot about the patriarchal structures that uh, lead to this situation in which women are left without a choice. So do you also, are you in touch with uh, organizations in these countries to uh, change the laws? Because I'm sure this is for you not only a medical issue, as you can see from the emails, there are so many other implications to that. Um, we started with the ship in um, 2001 was our first campaign and that was a disaster uh, as usually happens with first time, first time things. Um, when we were on our way to the Irish uh, coast, uh, the Dutch government uh, called the ship to say that the certificates of the ship were not valid anymore because there was a mobile treatment room on board the ship that it was an extra accommodation. And so what we did, because we had an artist who built the, con the the, the treatment room. We had the artist send a fax to the government saying that it was a functional piece of art and not an extra accommodation and so we could con continue sailing. Um, that didn't solve the problems then by the way. But um, the, the, When we did our campaign in Poland, um, the government tried to prevent the ship from entering the harbors. Uh, we were en so we claimed that we had motor problems um, and sailed into the harbor anyway, because as a ship, when you have motor problems, you're allowed to sail in. And then we got a fine, and we were chained for three days until we paid a huge fine, um, which we got back later, because we went to court to get it back. 
Um, but um, what happened there is that all the women that traveled with us on board the ship to international waters, and we only take some women and not all the women that take, come with us need an abortion because we try to protect their identity. So what happened is that at the last day that we sailed out, all the women were body searched. Uh, after we left, all the women that had sailed with us got a request from the government to come to the police station to testify. And they testify, and we had a lawyer that advised them. So their testimony was that they were volunteers on the ship um, and that they got sexual education on the way to international waters. And what happened in international waters was none of their business because that was Dutch law. So in Portugal, uh, as I said, we had the uh, Dutch warships of the, the Portuguese warships that stopped the ship from sailing in. In Morocco, we they sealed off the whole harbor, the government, so the, the journalists couldn't get in. We had already, the ship was already in the harbor because we had learned from Portugal, um, but nobody could get to the ship anymore because they had sealed off the whole harbor with the police cordon. And so we decided to launch the banners like a Trojan horse. And um, the next moment, the police were on the ship and tucked it out of the harbor. Um, without any explanation, no letter, nothing. And I think that is where we learned the difference between a rule of law country, like Portugal, where we got an official letter, you cannot enter because you're a threat to national security, and Morocco, which is a police state, where we just were tucked out without any explanation. So that is the obstacles that we face at the ship. But the ship is a tool, it's a tool to raise awareness, and I think we can help a few women on board the ship. And with these few women, uh, we call attention to the problem and we make the problem visible. Um, but that is not the solution in the end. And I think Women on Web is what really helps the women. That is the surface that reaches out, that sends the medicines to women where they need it. And even there, there's obstacles. Um, of course, uh, for example, the Irish government stopped the packages and um, they put women under pressure to testify. And at that time, I was the doctor that was prescribing the medicines, and I had a court case um, in Austria to stop me from prescribing, which I won, so that's good. So we could continue. Um, but in Brazil, for example, um, women, I, they have also been, some packages have also been stopped, and women have been on trial, and uh, they, lo they won the trial, so they didn't go to jail, but uh, I mean, the ordeal is awful that when you know when you get a package with medicines then you are put on trial so um, and that is of course a problem as well that there are still a lot of countries where women are put to jail for having an illegal abortion and what we advise women with women on web is that if there's a problem and they need to go to a doctor that they have to say that they have a miscarriage because there's no way you can trace the pills whether you use the pills it's not visible in any way um, and so that they can be can be safe from a criminal prosecution. Yeah.